I thought it would be a good idea to, for a webinar, uh, give a short introduction of 3D printing. So let's get started with that. Uh, so 3D printing is alternately known as additive manufacturing. Uh, in this webinar, I hope that uh, by the end of it, everyone has some understanding of the terms uh, required in additive, additive manufacturing. So when you go out for jobs and stuff and uh, you're working with 3D printing, you have a good understanding of what these terms are, what the technology is capable of, and uh, how you can use it in uh, your day-to-day -day life, actually, uh, and in your work as well. So let's get started with that. Uh, Okay, so in this uh, webinar, we are going to give you a quick quick introduction to 3D printing, followed by its advantages. Uh, of course, with every technology that has advantages, there are some challenges that come along with it. We'll talk about uh, different uh, domains and uh, sectors where uh, this technology can be used. We'll talk a little bit about different processes of 3D printing. I'll give you a quick uh, walkthrough into how you can uh, use 3D printing and what steps are involved when you want to print an object yourself. Uh, we will talk briefly about 3D printing with FDM, which is a technology I uh, very often use. And along with that, we'll talk about some common issues with FDM too. Now, uh, just to give you an understanding of 3D printing. So 3D printing includes something known as a 3D printer. Uh, in the 3D printer, what you would add is one, most importantly, is raw material. Uh, the material that also known as a build material that you'd be using to actually build this object second most important thing is you'd be creating a digital design of the object that you want to produce like physically produce uh, once you enter these two criteria into a 3d printer you click the print button and that's it and that's going to produce the object for you uh, as simple as it sounds uh, as you go through this webinar you'll understand the challenges that go along with it but uh, to put it in a in a few words yes this is basically 3d printing so uh, as you can see in the video uh, and just to talk about 3d printing there is a very important uh, technological aspect of it like a theoretical aspect of it uh, when producing objects that give rise to 3d printing it's called the layering approach also known as slicing so what 3d printing does is basically produces the object a layer at a time so let's talk about uh, 2d printing which we commonly know, know as basically just printing so an inkjet printer or a laser printer that we have at home basically prints an image. An image is in the X and the Y axis and thereby called two dimensional printing. Now, if let's imagine that you on the same printer, you keep printing on the same paper again and again and again and again and again. Now what's happening is when you're, you're printing uh, the same image again and again and again, you're actually printing in the third dimension to the Z axis. Now, so you have an image that's in the X axis, Y axis, and the Z axis. Thereby, this is not an image anymore, it's an object, and that's basically 3D printing. So whatever 3D model of the object that you want to produce, you'll first design it in any 3D software, like a CAD model. Then you need to slice it. So there's another software that would basically cut it into layers, and then the 3D printer would read this data from this particular software and print it layer by layer. And eventually, when all the layers are printed, it would produce a real object, right? So I hope you guys had a good, uh, like, understood that. And if you have any questions, please feel to free to ask them out, right? Uh, but as we go along the webinar, this will become more clearer, I hope. So what raw materials can be used for 3D printing? So most commonly used raw material would be a filament, which comes in reels like this and uh, it's made of thermoplastics or whatever material you want to print, but different processes utilize different types of uh, raw materials. The most common again uh, being uh, the filament, but certain processes also use powders, uh, certain processes use liquids, and uh, these basically vary from process to process, but uh, filaments are just easier to handle than powders. You can imagine uh, using powders for 3D printing and then basically having to clean all of that up and just powders going everywhere, liquids leaking out. So filaments are just much more easier to use. And uh, that is the reason why uh, FDM has uh, been able to gain so much market is because it's so much easier to use. So uh, considering now that we know this technology exists, so what are the advantages of 3D printing? So advantages of 3D printing would always be compared to conventional processes like molding or CNC or milling, something like that, that were used in the past to generate a physical object. So we'll be comparing uh, most of the 3D printing advantages to that. 
one of the most important advantage is rapid prototyping which means that you could produce everything at a very fast pace uh, you just need to design it in cad which is much easier uh, which is which is always easy but then to produce going from cad to physical object would probably take a much less time than any conventional process an important aspect of 3d printing is the complex geometries it can produce which is like intriguing all the way right for uh, sorry so as you can see in this image this object has such complex geometries with uh, things within itself no conventional process at the moment can actually produce this kind of a geometry which opens a lot of uh, a gateway to a lot of uh, objects that we can actually manufacture using this process which were which was almost impossible using conventional processes now uh, we spoke about additive manufacturing 3d printing being called additive manufacturing so what ha how it's different from subtractive manufacturing is that additive manufacturing adds material to produce to produce the object subtractive manufacturing which is something uh, like an older process like a cnc milling or drilling if you remember if you've seen that uh, at some point in your uh, careers or life is that they remove and remove material from an existing stock block now this material that's removed is actually wasted even though it might be recycled you put 99% uh, of the times it's not it's just thrown away thrown away so how the, that so 3d printing differs from that kind of processes in terms that none of the material that's actually loaded into the 3d printer gets wasted it's used in some way or the other to build the object itself accessibility is very important because these older processes that we just talked about are super expensive no one can uh, access them like you cannot have a cnc machine in your house it's very expensive on the other hand you can have a 3d printer in your house and you can just use it to print anything or produce an object with a geometry as complex as this uh, in your house itself so uh, another advantage is construction of objects with multiple materials so now 3d printing has uh, developed to us uh, level where uh, instead of using just one material you could use two materials to build, build an object using different materials and different parts of the object uh, it might sound like not interesting but it's very important in certain technologies where you want different materials in different parts of the object because uh, that's how they conduct certain processes uh, where these these objects need to be used another important one and i think this is uh, very interesting is customization abilities uh, which basically mean that any customer that you want can have a customized product for made particularly for them and the whole process does not need to be changed for it another one is embedding abilities so as you can see uh, in this uh, image itself there is a lot of hollow space in between which has which is which can be accessed by the 3d printer when producing this object this is very interesting because this gives you the ability uh, to embed another object into this object that's being manufactured right now while it's being manufactured so a lot of things like computer chips or uh, physical uh, tags or something uh, that uh, need to be embedded within the object can be easily done with this process you can also produce hollow and lightweight objects like for example a lot of processes uh, like for example you can take aeroplane wings aeroplane wings need to be hollow right so um, there are a lot of applications and objects that can that that that, that, that gain the gain advantage by being hollow or being uh, filled in a very specific way 3d printing gives you the ability to do that none of the other conventional processes let you do that so uh talking we'll go a little bit deeper into some of the advantages of 3d printing one of them and the biggest one is rapid prototyping uh, rapid prototyping is actually the reason why 3d printing was introduced and also why it's gaining it's a, whatever advantage it has right now uh, it comes from rapid prototyping so uh, you can imagine in a conventional form of manufacturing how expensive it would be to go from uh, a concept then you design it and then you make it in cad but just to create a prototype of that would take months and uh, so for example if you've ever been in a design a product designing process you would see that you actually design the product then you build it and then when you actually have it in your hand you realize that it's not exactly what you thought of and then you want to make an iteration or a change to this design so each time you make it snake something like that uh, it is going to take months and months and months to go from concept to design to eventually go to a final product uh, so what 3d printing does is that it reduces this time significantly so you can go from concept to design to product like a physical prototype of this product in a day that's it and that's 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 a great advantage for people who work in product design 
and uh, that's where this technology comes from actually comes from and building up to becoming a technology that can produce uh, final production parts that can be sold next advantage as we discussed is complex geometries this uh, advantage cannot be understated because uh, for for a very long time until the introduction of 3d printing a lot of designs and applications that people wanted to do in mechanics and manufacturing were limited by the conventional processes so a cnc is a cnc machine is only able to produce a limited number of geometries uh, it's diff it's uh, basically limited by its own abilities now with 3d printing for example you see these images and you sorry uh, sorry about that you see these images and you see the geometries how complex they are can only be done with 3d printing what it what, what this gives engineers and designers ability is the ability to actually look into these designs and uh, find explore new ideas and new thoughts and thereby helping development of engineering and improving the product quality and improving the product's abilities right so that's where this really kicks in next is customization now as you know uh, customization is something that everybody loves everybody wants uh, products to be made specifically for them everyone wants their products to stand out from uh, what someone else has and 3d printing is has been able to do that for quite some time so with 3d printing instead of uh, having your product being common and with everyone else you could actually use a customer's input and produce a product specifically for them at a very low cost which was almost impossible again with uh, conventional processes so for example uh, you can uh, if you're using conventional process making this uh, figurine which is exactly the makeup of the person who wants this figurine uh, would be very expensive but with 3d printing you can just scan this person and produce this figurine in in a matter of hours and i find that really amazing so uh, this goes on to uh, a lot of other applications like shoes clothing things that need to be very specific to a certain customer can be produced using 3d printing okay so again now that we've spoken of advantages obviously every prop every technology that has advantage has its own challenges so we're going to talk a little bit about the challenges that come along with the advantages of 3d printing and uh, this is very important to understand as well when selecting a process for 3d printing right so Yes, uh, one of the major challenges at the moment with 3D printing is material limitations. Not all materials can be 3D printed. Now, that's not because it's impossible. It's just that 3D printing is still in its infancy and there is a limitation to what all you can produce with 3D printing. Uh, while as we go along with time and te the technology keeps developing, there are companies like Xerox and many more who are working into developing processes that can produce, uh, that can print any and every material basically. But it's just limited at the moment uh, by materials. Another challenge with 3D printing is its surface finish. So unlike other processes, 3D printing uses a layered approach. What happens due to this is that the outer surface of the, of the 3D printed object actually has these sorts of uh, like these uh, grooves that you'd see because of the layers being printed one on top of the other and uh, although it's not that bad it's not that bad of a challenge it's just that uh, other processes give you a better surface finish compared to 3d printing now because uh, 3d printing uses this layering approach going from a lower layer then printing layers on top and top and top it's not exactly as fast as other processes like molding for example you can produce like hundreds of parts in a minute in molding 3d printing would take like hours to just produce one part so that's where you need to understand this trade-off and uh, what process you want to use for the product you want, to, you want to produce next is the printed object strength uh, so this is essential to understand because uh, 3d printed objects are, it's, it's not that 3d printed objects are not strong it's just that the the, the z-axis within on which the layers are produced the bonds between layers are weaker than the x and the y axis and that's the only difference that i would say it's not that the bonds are weak it's just that they're weaker on the x and uh, weaker than the x and y axis so on the x and y axis uh, the part would be much stronger than the z axis uh, which is something that you keep to keep in mind when you're using this process push processing so a lot of uh, processes that uh, are used in 3d printing require push processing because uh, of some aspect or the other for example when you're using uh, fdm uh, which we'll talk about later but uh, for now let's uh, 
yeah uh, we'll go into uh, deep, deeper into that uh, in some time but uh, when you're using uh, fdm you usually have like plastic parts that um, that need to be removed from the sides or basically we spoke about surface finish as well so a lot of time you would have to use a process to basically smoothen the external of the surface uh, when printing uh, metals you need to undergo a push processing process called hardening which basically combines all the particles of the material together uh, into the object embeds it into the object itself then again is cost so like we spoke about speed certain processes in themselves are very expensive and if not, when you are trying to produce this object compared to a conventional process, it would be much more expensive. For example, you want to produce a small part by molding, or uh, or compared to three D printing, you could be able you will be able to produce like thousands of this part in a part part in a minute. But with three D printing, you are producing just one an hour, right? So over you you are just not able to meet economies of scales with three D printing in that kind of a process. So that that being the difference there. Okay, so applications of 3D printing are, to be frank, limitless. It's all about your imagination, and uh, that's where this webinar comes into place. Uh, think you can you can use it anywhere to produce anything, but uh, we'll just talk a little bit about uh, domains and fields where this is already being used, and they have seen a significant amount of success with it. So one of them is most importantly rapid prototyping. So any domain that uses prototyping has, has, has had a significant success with 3D printing. Next is object manufacturing. Now, like we discussed before, like certain object, most it's, it's obviously not as uh, 3D printing is not as economic as other more conventional manufacturing processes. But if you look into the market more closely, there are certain products that need, uh, that are directly to be produced in lower volume and require higher customization and speed is not a issue. So basically they're, they're, these parts are more expensive in the first place. So 3D printing has really helped do these parts to get uh, become much more cheaper uh, over time. And then again, manufacturing products that need high customization that we discussed before. So uh, there are a lot of uh, products out there that need to be customized uh, very regularly uh, for the market, like probably every day. And uh, conventional processes are just more expensive than 3D printing to handle that kind of uh, product. So that's where 3D printing comes into play. Uh, as I said, again, industries are limitless. Like every industry can use 3D printing. But most common ones, like the ones who pioneered the whole technology are aerospace, shipbuilding, and automotive, uh, which are basically the biggest trade. And uh, another interesting one is construction and building. And I was oh shoot, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, I find very interesting is healthcare. Uh, healthcare has seen so much advantage and still it's still in its infancy, but we'll we're gonna discuss about it in the upcoming slide. Fashion, food, and beverage, which I, I personally never thought would be an application of 3D printing, has uh, used 3D printing very very successfully. They have been able to use 3D printing for more uh, applications and stuff than we can think of. Like there's food and there's clothing, shoes, uh, all sorts of stuff. And the more you dig into it, you can find much more information about that as well. So talking about aerospace and sh aerospace, uh, automotive and shipbuilding, these uh, are, uh, if you're, you're from those feet to have a good understanding of that, is that these thing, these these uh, industries have two major issues. One is uh, the develop product development times are extensively long. So a car's development time can be in years. So you the cars or for for aeroplanes is the same. These 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 industries do not change uh, very regularly. They do not make changes to their products is because their development times are so long. They have to meet so many regulations. They have to do a lot of experimenting. So uh, because of this, it's uh, very it takes a lot of time for them to actually undertake the product development process and testing. What three D printing does is that gives them a uh, of like we spoke about 3D printing, going from concept to a physical object is very easy with 3D printing. So uh, in these uh, industries, it's very useful for them to use 3D printing in their prototyping and product development phase. Again, due to these uh, industries have extensively long supply chains. Like uh, if you know about automotive, the manufacturer's manufacturing goes to uh, dealership and then comes to you and uh, there are a lot of moving parts involved within just within these uh, the supply chain. So if you want a product just specifically made for you, 
uh, this, it would take like a very long time and a lot of changes in the supply chain to actually get this product specifically made for you. So what 3D printing does is that uh, you can get a lot of stuff customized for yourself at the end of the business where you're directly in contact uh, with the company where you buy it from and they can help you customize certain aspects of the product that you want, uh, which is almost impossible with conventional processes. Next, uh, again, as I said, I find construction as an application of 3D printing to be very interesting. Uh, so uh, for a very long time, we've seen people people working very hard in the sun and uh, all day to actually build a house, right? Uh, now, just as you can see in the video, this machine, which is basically a 3D printer for construction, is going to construct a house completely within a day's time. And uh, if you notice, there is there are no workers involved. So this machine is just being fed with a design of the house and the material that it's going to use to produce this house. Now, in this case, I think they're using a very uh, eco-sustainable material, which is very good for the environment. And if you can, uh, uh, if you just noticed in the video itself, if you see the walls are not completely solid, they're actually hollow. And this, these kind of things are almost impossible to do with conventional processes. So you see the complicated designs uh, that you can use to actually build a house. Again, another noticeable thing in this video itself is the architecture of the house. So if you can see how complicated this design is, and even with this level of complexities, it's so easily able to produce this house. You don't see a lot of people running around. This, this machine does not need a break. Uh, you just feed in the material, feed in the design, and it's going to do its thing. Uh, again, uh, this is using an eco-sustainable material. But if you look uh, around, you can see videos using concrete, uh, bricks, and all sorts of materials being used for 3D printing of houses and in construction. Okay. Uh, yes, again, and another breakthrough with 3D printing technology applications is healthcare. Uh, as you all know, healthcare has been uh, in a boom for quite some time and uh, 3D printing has been the best of it. So organ transplant has been always been like a big issue. It's always difficult to get organs for transplantation and uh, it's been very difficult. Organ harvesting and stuff is like, is like has always been a big deal in the world, right? So imagine a 3D printer that can actually print an organ for example like you see in this image it's a heart uh, it might sound like a sci-fi thing but a lot of companies and universities are working on this and have had significant success so the raw material in this is actually the cells that are harnessed from uh, certain uh, sources and are actually used to 3d print an organ which i find really intriguing uh, Obviously, it's not in it's not in use today, but that they're, they're they're very close to reaching that stage where an organ can actually be three D printed for you, rather than having to have to harness it from someone else, right? Um, the second one, which is uh, very interesting again, is three D printing of prosthetics. Prosthetics, as you know, are super expensive, and uh, India being one of the pioneers in being able to produce low cost prosthetics is always uh, been interesting. But uh, it's very uh, interesting market because certain it's it's one of the it's it's a it's a product that needs the highest amount of customization when it comes to healthcare. So uh, a lot of products are produced uh, very generic for most people to use. But prosthetics very specifically have to be produced for a patient themselves. Now because of like we discussed about the long supply chains and the cost involved in the conventional process of producing this prosthetics have been highly inaccessible and very expensive uh, but with 3d printing there have been companies that have been able to produce uh, very customizable prosthetics in a very short amount of time for uh, people who need them another application by prosthetics and 3d printing work together is because uh, let's say a small child who needs a prosthetics prosthetic just like clothes children grow with time right the prosthetic needs that they have also change with time uh, and parents are not always able to uh, pay or pay like for every customized uh, prosthetic available file over a period of time, right? 3D printing can make the, has brought down the cost of these prosthetics significantly. So going from uh, basically design into actually producing this prosthetic for a very specific person is as short as a day. So uh, yeah, that's something again very interesting application of 3D printing. This again is food. Uh, so basically, it uses uh, 
the the raw material used in a 3d printer would be any form of food uh, most common the ones i've seen are chocolate and sugar uh, they're used mostly for aesthetic purposes not more for eating uh, for decorations on cakes and stuff of that sort again this is what i have seen but if you look hard enough like if you look there might be some more and some inter other interesting applications that might have come out uh, by now so uh, for a, for quite some time there has been uh, talks about meat being not a not a sustainable form of food uh, and we need to find out ways by which we can produce the same quality of food uh, without having to actually rear cows or uh, chicken or whatever form of meat that you eat uh, but uh, so there are materials out there uh, there are companies like uh, beyond meat and stuff like that who are actually producing um, materials that have the texture of meat flavor of meat but uh, they're not made out of meat they come from plant sources now uh, a lot of times uh, if you were a meat eater uh, then you would know is that uh, texture of the meat is very essential for the customers that actually consume this product right so 3d printing could actually help use these uh, plant based meats to be developed to be basically printed into a certain form that are very close to the actual texture of meat that you get from uh, animal source so yeah that's another some uh, some something that that uh, a lot of companies are looking into okay um, now that we've spoken about uh, how 3d printing works what are the applications where it can be used we're talking we're going to talk about some basically we're going to talk about processes by processes i mean some processes that a particular 3d printer would use to produce objects uh, that we are looking to manufacture so these are very commonly known processes again if this is this is not an exhaustive list by now there might be some more processes but these are the most commonly used processes that i know of and are extensively used in manufacturing right now so we'll talk about stereolithography also known as stl uh, which uses liquid resin as a raw material we'll speak of digital light processing which is called dlp uh, which, is, which uses a photopolymer liquid there's laser sintering also known as melting uh, it uses powders as a raw material. Fused deposition modeling, also known as FTM that we have spoken. I, I might have uh, brought this up multiple times before. It's also known as extrusion, and it uses filaments as a raw material. There's inkjet. Uh, inkjet is basically the Canon printers that we have at home that use a uh, jetting of ink to basically produce an image. Inkjet printers for 3D printing are very similar but they just uh, use, besides the X and Y, they're, they're able to access the Z axis to actually produce the object. So, okay, so we're gonna dig in a little deeper into each of these processes as well to get a good understanding of what goes into 3D printing if you want to print a very specific material or a very specific uh, object. Okay, STL. Stereolithography is basically how uh, 3D printing came into being. It's the first process that was invented specifically for printing objects. And it's like the basis of 3D printing. Every process that we see today has its origin out of uh, STL. If you have used a 3D printer before, and uh, if you've ever built a file for 3D printing, you would see that you have to save it as an STL file that actually comes from the word stereolithography. Uh, it's the oldest form and uh, so, the raw material used in STL is actually a liquid resin. This resin will basically be cured by a laser beam. So it consists of a tank that consists that contains the liquid resin and there's a laser on top. Now to produce each layer, what the laser will do is the laser will go into the liquid, basically uh, not go into the liquid, but will be directed towards the liquid and it will cure a certain part of the liquid. So initially, this platform that you see over here will be at the brim of this tank at the top. And as each layer is being cured, this piston will start moving lower, lower, lower. Each step that the piston takes would be a function. It would be the size of each layer that you have basically designated in the product design. And it will keep going lower, lower, lower until it reaches the bottom or when the object is formed at the top. After this, you need to remove the object from the basically the tank and then post processing is involved in cleaning out the rest of the liquid resin that's remaining on the object and you have an object okay so again this uses liquid resin going into dlp dlp stands for digital light processing 
it uses a liquid again known as a photopolymer. If you see this process, it's very similar to STL because again, it has its roots in STL. But uh, how it differs is that um, in the build plate or the piston that we discussed in the last uh, slide is actually on top. So instead of going from top to bottom, this is a bottom to top approach. Uh, the reason being that it reduces the need for post-processing because the liquid stays inside the tank instead of settling on to the build plate or the object itself. So what is a photopolymer? A photopolymer is a liquid that would solidify when uh, when put in, 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 in front of a certain a light of a certain wavelength or a certain frequency. So a specific light is used using a digital light projection screen and uh, a certain uh, each layer is projected individually and it, it basically the build plate is at the bottom at the start and the light projection will cure certain amount of the photopolymer based on the layer design that you've originally designated. As you produce each layer, this build plate will keep moving higher and higher and higher until an object is produced and basically pulled out of the liquid with the build plate itself.